This is a prairie fire flower. You can find them on a ranch in Texas. That ranch is owned by a guy. These are his socks. This is his hand. He quit drinking at 40. Now he likes to paint, but that's not why we're telling you about this guy. We're telling you about him because he did one of the best things that anyone has ever done, at least in the last 20 years. So what did he do? He saved 25 million lives around the world. Yep, you heard that right, 25 million. That would be like saving every Australian. And here's a catch. You already know him. You might not even like him. So, who is he? Yeah, that guy saved 25 million lives. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. Yes, we're talking about former President George W. Bush, best known for something he did 20 years ago this month. The attack came in waves, cruise missiles, powered by the... During his first four days in Abu Ghraib, it's the world's most notorious jail, Guantanamo Bay. Last month, the sectarian violence... Nearly half a million people have died from violence in Iraq. Y'all might call it a paradox. The safety of America depends on the outcome of the battle in the streets of Baghdad. Bush waged the Iraq war and saved 25 million. To get our head around this, we talked to another guy. He also lives on a ranch. These are his socks. Howdy, Nick. Howdy. Hello. Hey there. Nick covered the Bush administration and the war in Iraq. The Iraq war was a catastrophe. I opposed it. I hammered Bush for it. But it's time for us to acknowledge another truth about his legacy, even if it's uncomfortable for us liberals. Bush also authored the single best policy of any president in my lifetime. And most Americans don't even know about it. Just a few weeks before Iraq, Bush also launched PEPFAR, a global program to fight AIDS. Seldom has history offered a greater opportunity to do so much for so many. Tonight I propose the emergency plan for AIDS relief. A work of mercy beyond all current international efforts to help the people of Africa. Before Bush came along, AIDS was a death sentence. I remember going to Swaziland and meeting this little 12-year-old girl. Nikwanda, how old are you? Whose parents had died of AIDS and who was left to care alone for her two little sisters, aged seven and nine. PEPFAR saved lives by preventing HIV infections including to newborns during childbirth and by making antiretrovirals widely available. I knew things had improved dramatically when I visited Lesotho and Malawi, and coffin makers complained to me that their once booming business was in crisis. Way fewer people were dying because of President Bush. Maybe once a month, you sell one coffin a month. Every month, maybe one coffin. And he didn't do it because of outside pressure and didn't win votes. White House speechwriter Michael Gerson, an evangelical, presented it as the right thing to do. And Bush did it. You know, I had some disagreements with my predecessor. One of the outstanding things that uh, President Bush did was to initiate the PEPFAR program. The program still runs strong today. Last year alone, 20 million people got treatment through it. It's been a huge success. He thought big, he thought large. So why do so few Americans know about any of this? Unless you go to a U2 concert. I want to thank President Bush and Laura Bush for leading that effort, for creating that effort. But give it up to them. Working together, there's nothing we cannot accomplish if we are what? One. Look, reporters, we like our controversies and disasters, and PEPFAR's neither. There's nothing to argue about. If PEPFAR involved critical race theory or, or gendered bathrooms, people might care more. Looking back, I've got my regrets. I complained constantly that the Bush administration was too focused on abstinence. Yeah, that was true. 
but I missed the fundamental truth that Bush was turning the tide of one of the deadliest epidemics in history. I also worry that because we didn't give Bush credit, we didn't incentivize other presidents to take on bold projects like this. Y'all know about the Marshall Plan and how it helped rebuild Europe from the ashes of World War II. That was America at its best. Well, maybe at its second best. Listen, you don't have to like George W. Bush, but let's be honest about history, and let's accept that truth and people are complicated. When we ignore something so momentous, we're not sticking it to Bush, but to history and to truth.